Hello everyone. Welcome to today's session. And today we are dealing with Arundhati Roy's The God of Small Things. Arundhati Roy, an Indian, her original name is Susanna Arundhati Roy. And she was awarded the Man Booker Prize in the year 1997 for her debut novel, The God of Small Things, and which brought her much international attention. And she won the National Film Award for her Best Screenplay in the year 1989 for the work in which Annie gives it those ones. And her second novel is The Ministry of Utmost Happiness, published in the year 2017. And in the novel, The God of Small Things, the story is told from the children's perspective by an omniscient narrator. In this video, I wish to discuss the characters, summary, and the narrative technique used by the writer, the simple theme, and a few important questions. Let's familiarize the characters in the novel. Rahe, she is the female protagonist of the novel, and the story is written from the perspective of Rahel. The story begins with Rahel's return to Aymanam to see her brother, and she has an intimate relation with her twin brother Esther and fails to make a strong relation with her mother Ammu. She marries Larry McCasling, but that ends up in divorce. Esther his complete name is Estepan Yaku Aib. His relation with Rahel is much more important than anything. They create a world for themselves without communicating to others. He is once molested by orange drink, lemon drink man and that haunts him throughout his life. Esther returns to live with his father Baba but later he re-returns to Aymanim. Ammu the mother of Rahel and Esther. Absence of happy life pertains throughout her life. She always longs to escape from Aymanam and goes to Calcutta and marries Baba, but it becomes a mistake. Ammu finds solace with Velutha and she goes against the love laws of Aymanam and has an unaccepted relation with Velutha. She died of asthma at the age of 31. Veluta. He is called Veluta, which means white in Malayalam, but he is so black. Despite being a paravan, Veluta has achieved an extraordinary position in the Aib family and in the factory. He has rabbi physic and great skill in carpentry. He is a beloved of the twins and Veluta's life is not shaped by his social status or political beliefs. His affair with Ammu shows his violation of social rules. For his unconditional love, he loses load, thus he earns the title, the god of laws. Veluta dies in police custody. A marginalized paravan? Quote, the god of laws, the god of small things. He left no footprints in sand, no ripples in water, and no image in mirrors. Chako, Amu's brother who owns the entire property of Aip family. Chako goes to Oxford and marries Margaret Kachama and leaves her after the birth of Sophie Moore. Outwardly, Chako supports Marxism but his ideas and beliefs are conflicted with his actions. And he is a multifaceted personality and has contempt for his father and anchorate Amu. Sophie Moll, half English and half Indian daughter of Margaret Koshama and Chaku, and she likes to make relation with Veluta, Rahel and Esther. At last, she drowns in the Menachil River and lived only for seven years, but her life and death causes great problems in the Aip family. Baby Koshama, daughter of a priest and the great aunt of Rahel and Esther. She has much grudge towards Ammu and Veluta, and she accuses Veluta for Sophie's death. She is responsible for the separation of Rahel and Esther, and she is 83 year old in the last narration. 
she is an embodiment of willfulness and adaptation towards her family's customs and traditions and a master in the skill of manipulation and conspiracy and there are several minor characters in the novel first one is comrade knm pillai he is the leader of the communist party in aymanam and he runs a local printing press valle papan veluta's father who serves the ai family for many years margaret kochama wife of chaku and mother of sophie mol after the divorce she marries joe but he is killed in a car accident next we are moving on to a brief summary of this novel and what is peculiar about this novel is a sequential narration is absent in the story the major events occur in the past in the year 1969 and the present 1993 the god of small things tracks three generations of a family's history but it predominantly focusing on ammu rahel and esther and is mainly set in aymanam in india The novel opens in 1993 when the 31-year-old Rahil has just returned to Aymanam after a long absence. The story starts in 1969 when the fraternal twins Rahil and Esta are 7 years old and then ends in 1993 when they reunite at the age of 31. Papaji an authoritarian father lost his chance of becoming a famous entomologist and always beats his wife Mamachi who runs a pickle factory Ammu the daughter marries an estate manager from Assam in order to escape from her father but her life is worsened by her husband Baba's abusive behavior and she returns to Aymanam with her twin children Rahel and Esta Chako their son goes to Oxford where he marries an English woman named Margaret and they have a daughter Sophie after getting divorced Chako returns to Aymanam and Chako invites his ex-wife and daughter Sophie to visit Aymanam The main action centers around Sophie Mall and her visit to Aymanam. Chako, Ammu, Rahel and Esther go to pick them up from airport and the group wish to watch a film and something unexpected happens to Esther from the theater. Esther is molested by a movie theater's snack vendor and after that incident Esther always wishes to escape from his current life. So Esta and Rahel find solace in the history house across the river and they used to hide in that history house. And in Kerala, communist party gains popularity and Veluta an untouchable a communist a beloved of the twins work in the family. Ammu is attracted to Veluta and they continue to meet each other at night. The twins decide to visit the history house again then Sophie Mall accompanies them but the boat tips over and Sophie Mall drowns. The twins become terrified and they hide in the history house. Baby Kochama informs the inspector Thomas Matthew that Veluta is responsible for the death of Sophie Mall. And Chako throws Ammu out of the house as per baby Kochama's order. And after the funeral of Sophie, Ammu forces to send Esther to Baba. Ammu dies at the age of 31 and Veluta is arrested and died in the police station. The twins become separated and Rahel goes to study architecture and she marries, divorces and re-returns to Aymanam at the age of 31. The next storyline takes place in 1993 in Aymanam. The family home has decayed, occupies now only 83-year-old baby Kochuma and their cook Kochumeria. Rahel sees Esther as a totally desperate man, wishes to escape from everyday life. She tries to engage Esther to bring him back from silence. So she uses to spend a lot of time with Esther and that leads to the sexual relationship. For the first time, they feel they are with someone they love. What is the significance of the title? That's an important question. And the book explores how the small things affect people's behavior and their lives. The God of small things represents Veluta, the man whom Ammu loves.
Veluta, the paraben, is considered as small by everyone other than Ammu. Veluta, the twins and Ammu are small things in terms of positions, but big in terms of dignity, loyalty and kind of love. The image of water lily represents how much the writer gives importance to the small things of everyday life. And Arundhati Roy's aim is to transform the humble men and women into heroic creatures. So next we can have a look at the structure of this novel. This novel has 21 chapters with significant titles and what is important is it has a fragmented structure and it includes a lot of incidents and episodes and all the incidents and episodes are unusual and unique. The events are not presented in a chronological order the multi-layered narrative structure explores the complex relation between trauma, history, memory and history. So let's discuss uh, what are the narrative features of this particular novel. And here we can see the novel is written in a non-sequential narrative style. And through non-linearity, uh, Roy brings a cohesive structure to the novel and illustrates a kaleidoscopic view of reality. And the incidence in this novel has a cyclical return and dynamic development. She used a multi-layered storytelling technique which gives a deeper meaning to the novel. The novelist presents past events always in the present and present always shaping the future and the narrative moves between two points in 1969 and 1993 and Rahel becomes an omniscient narrator and she who talks about all the incidents and characters of the entire story and Rahel's perspective of seeing things changes as a seven-year-old girl and as an adult woman and the novel begins at the end and ends in the middle of the story. It ends with Veluta and Amu making love and it ends on the word tomorrow. And the novelist repeatedly employed a modified form of stream of consciousness technique in this novel. Arundhati Roy has used several symbols in this novel and the first one we are going to discuss is Papaji's Moth. Papaji, a well-known entomologist, is an embodiment of angry and violent outburst. His temperament is the result of not getting credit for his discovery of a new species of moth. And moth represents his anger, fear and uncomfortable feelings. When Rahel is afraid, she feels the moth is on her body. The next one is Paradise Pickles and Preserves, a kind of museum of the past, just like the Ive family tries to preserve the past. The business represents how badly the family wants to control time, and the factory symbolizes how they preserve the memories and keep the memories with them forever. Next is Plymouth. Papachi buys a sky blue ply mouth and he never let anyone to enter it and drive it. It represents his revenge for having not respected. After the death of Papachi, the family uses the car as a mark of status and the communist party protesters surround the car and react angrily against it as a symbol of status and ply mouth represent bourgeoisie and 23 years later the car is still in the house which represents the decay of the family and positions. Next, and the important one is the history house. The author calls it the house of darkness. Kari Saipu, uh, an English man who had gone native and it is the house of Kari Saipu. And for Rahel and Desta, it's a refuge for children to escape. To them, the house is a place of mystery and adventure. The house becomes a secret meeting place for Ammu and Veluta, also for Esther and Rahel to hide after Sophie Mall drowns. And Chaco metaphorically uses the house as a symbol for India and family's history. And later, it becomes a five-star hotel for tourists.
Next is the river. The river mentions in the novel is Menachil River and the most important events in the novel happening around the river. It holds many secrets of Ayamanam. The river holds the truth behind the death of Sophie Mole and the affair between Veluta and Ammu. Next is Rahel's toy watch, the freezing of the time from Rahel's perspective. The repetition of 10 to 2 represents the small things in Rahel's life. Like the two hands on the watch, the twins cannot move forward and Rahel longs for a real watch on which she could change the time. Let's look at uh, The God of Small Things as a post-colonial novel. Arinthati Roy in her novel clearly narrates how the colonized people appreciates and imitates the English culture. The family has great appreciation towards English language, manners and culture. And Sophie Mole's half-English identity is important both for the members of the family and for the people outside. And they gain a hybrid identity, a mix of native and colonial identity. Rahel and Esther try not to imitate the English values and language, but they cannot escape from feeling inferior when they compare themselves to their half-English cousin Sophie Moore. And Chaco, educated at Oxford University, realizes that their country and mine have been captured by the colonizer and he depicts his own people as Anglophil. And Roy's protagonist Rahel and Esther grow up in a village in Kerala, but they too are attracted to Elvis Presley, Broadway musicals, peppermint candies, love in Tokyo hair bands, and road scholarships, etc. Let's read the novel in a feministic perspective. And here we can see uh, Roy depicts generations of women characters in the novel. The first generation represents Mamachi, a successful entrepreneur who runs a pickle factory, and Papachi, her husband, as a patriarchal authority, continuously tortures her physically. And even then, she becomes a successful entrepreneur. And Mamachi is brave enough to appoint Veluta, the skilled man, as the chief mechanic in her company. Independence of women as a more significant theme can be noticed in the novel through the central character Ammu, the second generation woman. Ammu, the female protagonist, breaks the boundaries and subverts the laws of the society and creates her own world of freedom. And being the victim of gender discrimination in her family right from her childhood, Ammu violates all laws silently. Ammu wishes to escape from Papachi's torments and her marriage with Baba and his attempts to utilize her as an object to satisfy his bows in order to get back his job and that ends up in divorce. She provides a space for Veluta, an untouchable, to experience equality where she explores the realm of freedom. And Ammu is the woman who tries to rebel against the values and patriarchal system in Indian society. Rahil, a modern and an educated rebellious woman who breaks the social norms and refuses to follow the patriarchal norms. And she is denied by society, not only because of Ammu's actions, but also because of her own. And in fact, she lives her whole life the way she wants and does not care about the consequences. And Rahil drifts from school to school because she is expelled for many reasons. And she has no friends and she protests against society's norms and customs. And Rahil marries a man of her own choice, just as her mother. In contrast with Mamachi and Ammu, Rahil divorces her husband the moment she realizes that she, he fails to fulfill her needs. And unlike Mamachi and Ammu, she is not ready to lead a life of loveless married life. And Papachi, Chako and Baba are representative of exploited, authoritative male who oppress women. Next is Trauma. Haunted by memories from the past, the novel exhibits the general characteristics of trauma. And Esther is the victim of trauma created by the people in the family and society. 
the sexual attack of orange drink lemon drink man hones esther throughout his life and he persuades rahel to transport to the history house across the menachal river as a means to escape from orange drink lemon drink man then he comes up with his own philosophy anything can happen to anyone and it's best to be prepared Rahel is haunted by the fragmented memories of her trauma. She shares common traumatic memory, but she becomes rebellious, aggressive, and expressive. She fails to establish a strong relation with anyone other than Esther. So her relation with Larry McCaslin ends in divorce. Two weeks time mark the consequence of terror. So they are Sophie Moll's death, the occurrence and consequence of Veluta's death and Ammu's exile. And Rahel and Desta's trauma eventually leads to the incest. So let's see some important questions. First one is, what is Baby Kochama's real name? The answer is Naomi Aip. Second question, whom does baby Kochama fell in love with at the age of 18? Answer is Father Mulligan, an Irish monk. But her plan fails and she goes to United States for studying ornamental gardening. Next one, who is referred as vinegar-hearted, short-tempered midget cook? That is Kochumeria. And next is who is Esther's dog? That is Kupchand. And what is the time in Rahel's toy wrist watch the answer is always 10 to 2 who is an anglophile that means someone is like britishers according to chaku answer is papachi and next one is rahel calls esther elvis the pelvis which politician is mentioned in the novel the answer is ems nambudiripad who is kochutomben so it's an elephant the film which they have enjoyed in the Abilash Talkers is The Sound of Music. Why Veluta is considered as the god of loss. His love for Ammu causes the loss of his job and his life. The novel ends with the words of Ammu as Nale, that means tomorrow. And here ends the video. I hope you got all the important points with regard to this novel. And I'm sure this class will help you to score good marks for your exams. And please comment and share with your friends. Thank you.